guys, Daryl with the Allegheny My Living Channel. Hope everybody's doing well. Wanted to throw a video together today on uh, one of my top two favorite auto loading shotguns of all time the Model 1100 Remington. It's a very beautiful gun, as you can see. This was actually my first Remington gun that I have uh, ever owned at the time of purchase when I bought it years ago. This particular model here is the Tournament Trap model which came with a 30 inch ventilated rib barrel. Uh, the Tournament Trap models actually had a uh, cut and carved checkering on the stocks instead of uh, instead of being stamped out like the the other lines were the other 1100s you know the field versions and some of the other ones there was a lot of different versions of this gun but this was more of the the fancier model I don't know if you can see see the uh, checkering on the bottom and then this checker in here classic white inlay oh it also came the tournament traps also had this type of uh, a recoil butt plate instead of just a plastic butt plate like the other ones had and they have real nice engraving here chrome bolt with a little scroll work on it then on this side you can see the scroll work and Remington model 1100 see the deep gloss finish very durable finish they put on these these guns were put through all kinds of strenuous testing back when they were uh, making them and doing all their field testing and everything but uh, gentleman by the name of uh, Wayne Leak designed this gun for Remington they started production in 1963 on the model 1100 which uh, is still produced today you can still buy a Model 1100, and I believe you can actually buy a Model, model Tournament Trap like this one. I think it might be a uh, Model TB, or it, it has it's a little different variation in the name, you know, so they could distinguish between the newer and old ones. Uh, the gun weighs around eight pounds. They chambered these guns in 410, 28 gauge, 20 gauge, 16 gauge, and 12 gauge. It's a uh, gas operated recoil system, meaning the gas expelled by the cartridge actually throws the bolt back on it. chambers the next round which is uh, pretty neat that also helps with recoil this gun hardly kicks at all it is a heavier gun but due to the system that they put in place with the gas the gas uh, operated system it really absorbed and helped take away a lot of the recoil so this this was a really, really good gun. A lot of guys used this for shooting skeet and trap because you could, you could pound the shells out on it. And it didn't bother your shoulder at all. Um, it holds four and one in the chamber, five rounds, like most automatic shotguns. Like I said before, they used a uh, Dupont Dupont finish on it. Uh, it's a very durable finish. Stands up well to green briars and other other things you may encounter out in the field or 
wherever. A lot better than a lot of the traditional finishes do on some of these older guns. Um, it was designed to be very durable and hold up for a long time as well as this one did. This one here is a 1977 or 78 I believe. It, some of the marks are hard to read on these to date them but uh, it come back in a 77, 78 so it's an older one it's not real old like I said they, they started in 63 but uh, this was the successor to the model 58 and the model 878 which were also a gas operated gun um, this was really the very first really reliable gas operated gun out on the market though. This thing, I mean, I, I've obviously taken good care of it and I keep it clean and keep the mechanism clean, but it actually self cleans itself every time it shoots, the way it expels the gases in there, it'll clean itself out, which is a, a pretty neat thing. That was pretty in, innovative for the time and the, just the whole design in general is just phenomenal. This was basically their their flagship for Remington for a long, long time. I mean, this this is what they were known by, you know, 1100 Remington, along with other guns. But this this really was a a staple for the company. Uh, really did well for them. A lot of the other. Uh, designs on the autos were more like uh, a recoil action sort of like the Browning Auto 5's Sweet 16's where when you shot the whole barrel actually moved back which worked the action to cycle the gun eject and then elevate the shell into the chamber again which was a really neat design too and that's my other favorite auto loading shotgun is the Browning Auto 5. Beautiful gun. And uh, we'll do a video on one of those too here one of these days. Uh, we have one of those around also in a Sweet 16. Belgium made. That's a whole different video though. But these, these two, this one and the Browning Auto 5. A uh, little history on the Auto 5 before Browning was making it. Remington actually made, I believe it was a Model 11. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't stick with it or run it, but uh, then another company I think picked it up and made it for a while and then it went over to a company in Belgium and they were making it for Browning. And that's who made the Auto 5 for many years till it went to Japan in its uh, later, later stages. But the uh, the Belgian ones are the the highly desired models. Um, I know they have sold over four million of these guns uh, as of now, which is phenomenal. Uh, this is the highest sold automatic shotgun in the United States history. Um, 1100 holds the record for the most shells fired out of an auto shotgun without any malfunctions, cleaning, or any parts breakage. I believe the number was 24,000 rounds they shot through it. And that was in 1978 when they set that record. Other companies have tried to break that record, but I don't believe anybody has to, to date. When you think about it, that's pretty phenomenal. 24,000 shells fired through a gun, continuous, without cleaning it, no parts, nothing, and it and it worked flawlessly. That's that's pretty amazing. That that speaks for itself. I know if you go on YouTube, there's some there's a promotional video from back in '63 when they were designing this gun. Uh, I don't know what it's under. I think I've seen it on a couple different channels, but 
it is neat as the, the the narrated voice and everything but it shows all the testing they put these guns through and what they did to them you know freezing them dirt shooting them constantly getting them so hot that the wood was actually catching on fire and then throwing them in a brook pulling them back out you know with dirt and water all over them shooting them again it just they were just a, a great design you know i've had this gun for a long time now and uh it's always been a good gun. I've never even changed the O-ring in it like a lot of guys have to. It could be getting to its life expectancy though. Um, I haven't shot it like I used to in a long time because I don't get, get in the trap much anymore. But uh, I would like to take her out in the field and do some shooting with her because it's, it's just a dream to shoot. It's like a Cadillac. I mean... Like I said, there's no recoil whatsoever. Well, there's recoil, but it's not like a standard 12 gauge shotgun. Chambered in a two and three quarter inch shell. It doesn't take the uh, three inch. I believe Remington has a newer one out now that does take three inch shells, but the 1100 doesn't. Um, thirty inch barrel. I think I went over that with the trap model. It has the ivory front front. Uh, uh, dot sight bead back here double bead for line up it's just a dream to shoot trap with I think that's about it uh, I wanted to tell you about this thing I just thought this guns well worth the uh, time to make a video on it just a beautiful beautiful gun all the way around, you just, you, I mean, you look at it, it's just quality. And uh, any of you guys that own these or have shot them know what it's like to shoot one and how, how nice they are to shoot and how much quality is actually there. If uh, you've never shot one, well, I'd advise you to give it a try because I'm sure you'd be looking for one if you did. I can't really vouch for the new models. I don't. I don't know. You know, after the '70s, what they're like. I'm sure they're great guns too. I think they're pretty similar. I think the triggers might be a little different on them. They have something sort of like maybe the action trigger for savages, like a guard type deal that you pull in prematurely before the trigger goes in. But I don't think they've changed much on them. Um, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. You know, why change something that's perfect? But, that's about all I wanted to say for this one. Beautiful old gun. I love the old shotguns. I love all guns, but I love the old shotguns. Uh, there's just something about them. Americana and its finest, you know, in the industrial age. and. This country really pumped out some beautiful things. There's still nice things made here. It's just a shame how much isn't made here anymore. But uh just want to thank you guys for all your continued support. I appreciate you guys that support the channel. I leave positive comments all the time. I love talking with you guys. You guys send me emails. Uh, let me know uh, what your experiences are with the 1100 Remington. If you have one or you're your dad had one or your grandpa had one or you still have one today uh, what do you think about the 1100 you know what I think about it it's a phenomenal gun if you like this video or any of the other videos hit the thumbs up if you want to ask me anything or leave a comment about the video and the gun leave it down below in the comments section if you know anybody that would like the channel or appreciate the content that we're putting up please share share the videos with them it uh, helps get the Allegheny Mountain Living name out there and I think that's about it for this one appreciate you guys coming in and sitting down with me while I talk about this gun and uh, until next time have a good evening